We have pollen, we have the exchange of CO2 as a source of the sink, we have emissions of volatile organic compounds which can be measured here, and we have a lot of extreme events from the atmosphere impacting on the biosphere. So you know all that climate is changing and this is the mean global northern hemispheric um, temperature. And what matters for biosphere is not only this increase in mean, but the change in precipitation, which is very more, more difficult to judge whether we will have more or less precipitation, and changes in extremes. So uh, higher variability and a change asymmetry will give you more extremes on both sides, and this really matters. And as the State Ministry for Environment already mentioned, we have a higher increase in temperature here in the mountainous areas. This is a most recent study from the Himalaya. So they measure an increase by 0.6 degrees per decade. And what do we have here? We have a very new study here where we um, studied 10 climate stations in the Alpine area and looked for changes. So everything is increasing, but the variability, this really depends on the season and on the time period where we have whether we have this change variability or not. Our stations here, the 10 stations and the different seasons really show trends which are comparable to the Himalaya. So we also have 0.6 degrees per decade warming here in the Swiss and in the German Alps. And as these lines are all like this here, we can derive from this quantile regression that we also have a more variability. And this is what the vegetation people don't like that much. I work for the fourth IPCC assessment report in deriving a footprint of climate change on nature and we use this map. The green dots are changes in biosphere, the blue one changes in physical systems. Um, they are all significant and 90% of all them are in the direction the climate change would suppose. And these pattern match. So where we have the highest increase in temperature, we also have the highest increases and changes in nature. And thus means so we have a real footprint of climate change in nature. So what we derived were changes in terrestrial systems, uh, earlier spring, uh, longer vegetation period, changes in productivity, um, changes of ranges of species, invasion and uh, composition of vegetation. And this is the famous example of an endemic species which is supposed to move upwards and the mountain is somewhere stopped here and moving up means then going into, into sky and heaven. Whatever. <laughs> so, but you can also sense this uh, productivity changes here in this increase in CO2 and this seasonality here is mostly driven by uh, vegetation impacts. Now we have an extra measurement network below the Zugspitze. So this is the view from the Zugspitze to Garmisch. And what we installed here during a project funded by our state environmental ministry is um, four gradients with four climate stations and nearly 50 logger stations in the area, in the forest, to really sense the changes where they are. Otherwise we would only have a climate station here in Garmisch and here in the Zugspitze, and in between there is nothing. So this uh, network really helps us to monitor these changes. What is done especially is by our colleagues from the University of Augsburg. They did a survey of all the vegetation here in the Zugspitzblatt, where you have this view. Guess how many species are there, plant species? Um, number? 100. 164. <laughs> so it's really amazing. There is tiny little vegetation, but it's, it's heavily influenced by sheep in summer and also by our human activities starting from skiing area. Then we have the Schachen, which is a very famous castle by Ludwig II. And there we have an alpine botanical garden and they set up a network of cloned plant material, endemic species, to monitor their phenological changes. This means flowering dates, for example. And we derive from the forest vegetation that the growing season is really lengthening. And one degree delay uh, translates to two weeks longer growing season at both ends here and here. And we know that species react differently and especially beech might profit from this longer growing season, whereas spruce does not. 
We can also use this space for time approach for education of uh, students and pupils from the schools. We do that also here in this area uh, in collaboration with our um, Center for Pupil Education in Berchtesgaden and also schools. And this is really nice. They can really sense changes in these altitudinal gradients. We also sense the activity of the vegetation by measuring CO2 concentrations and stable isotopes of um, carbon in CO2. And here you see the normal CO2 curve with a minimum in summer due to a photosynthetic activity. And the C13 curve has a maximum in this area. And here, these spikes and variability, this is just transport of air masses here to the Schneefanghaus. We also measure formaldehyde and VOCs with a GC and um, FED. We will see it later on in the slab area. And this is all financed by the Virtual Alpine Observatory. Changes in, um, in agriculture and forestry also um, summarized by this IPCC report are changes in philology, more extreme events, heat waves, drought. And here you see um, days of hay cutting. They do not change over the last decades, whereas flowering does. So that means for us that the farmers do not track climate change as they could do. And this is a very interesting question which should be really looked more into detail in the future. Another example about extreme events are uh, forest fires. Here in the Alpine region you might say northern Alps and forest fires. It is a bit strange what she is telling us. And this is, over the last six decades, the increase in days with a high forest fire danger and this is also increasing in the Northern Alps, not only in the Southern Alps. The projections for the future really depend on uh, changes in precipitation regimes and you see here a um, heavier increase on the Southern Alps than in the Northern Alps. And this is a forest fire in November 2011 a month where we had a, a single drop of rain here in this area and this fire in Germany could not be extinguished for four days. This was a bit of catastrophe. Why? The helicopters were stuck in an inversion layer in the fog in the valley and it was brightest sunshine, brightest, finest weather with high temperatures and very, very low humidity above this inversion layer. And this means that currently the forest fire danger indices are not calculated for November they are calculated for Garmisch station, which is here in the valley, and it totally gives you the wrong um, dimensions of these dangers. So we have a new project here where we use uh, Campbell um, litter moisture sticks, which here are installed in this sensitive region, and they give you online the moisture and the danger in this area here.